right now. We are tracking Hurricane Florence as it pounds the Carolinas. This is a live look from North Carolina. You can see the damage that that thing has done. It's making landfall with torrential rain and packing high winds. Flood waters now inundating communities. We will take a look at the latest coming up in just a minute. Meanwhile, here in the Alamo City, a gloomy, cloudy day. Rain is on the horizon. Some of you have already gotten some. We head into the weekend. You can expect some isolated showers as well. Also here at home, a man killed in a crash on the south side after hitting a police cruiser and then crashing into a utility pole. Now, one person who witnessed the scene is explaining what actually happened and why the victim may have been traveling at a fast speed. But first, we're going to talk about that uh, weather out on the East Coast. Hurricane Florence finally made landfall, and she came in with a roar. She did, and we are waiting for more rain. Meteorologist Justin Horn in with a quick check on our forecast. Yeah, we've got some showers out there right now. Most of these are pretty light, but we've seen on transkites some wet roadways, so expect that uh, we'll see some of these passing showers over the next couple of hours. And as we get into the afternoon, the radar should become a little bit more active. We've got some deep tropical moisture starting to work into the area. And we can see the heavier rain down along the coast, and that is... Uh, that moisture that is building down there, it will be moving off to the west. And so we do have a flash flood watch in effect. That goes until tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock. And the main reason this watch is in effect is because we have saturated soils. And we're expecting more rain with these downpours that could cause some flash flooding at times. So we have to be careful with that. Our forecast for today, uh, about a 70% chance of rain as we get into this afternoon and this evening. High temperatures only in the low 80s because of the cloud cover and because of that potential for rain. And there's a look at Florence. There it goes. It's a huge storm, made landfall earlier this morning, still producing a ton of rain. And it was a disastrous landfall on the North Carolina coast. Dangerous floodwaters now inundating communities. Heavy wind and rains knocking out power for hundreds of thousands. The storm delivering torrential rainfall and ferocious winds topping 105 miles per hour, although it's starting to weaken some. In New Bern, North Carolina, waves reaching first floor windows, prompting emergency situations Federal officials say the storm surge will present the biggest challenge it already has, and they'll uh, spend days uh, working to clean a lot of that mess up. We're focused really on safety and security and, and rescue missions. We have over, I think it's close to 1,300 search and rescue uh, assets, people and, and assets on the ground and from South Carolina to the District of Columbia. The number of homes losing power rising, and they could be in the dark for weeks. The developing concern now is high tide that will continue to push water into communities and cause dangerous flooding. Guys. Thank you so much, Justin. Meantime, we have some new information about a deadly overnight crash on the south side. The driver has been identified as 31-year-old Jonathan Paul Smith. And authorities say he was speeding when he hit a police unit, causing the cruiser to hit a utility pole. That pole then led to the fatal crash of Smith. It happened near Tupper Avenue and West South Cross Boulevard at around 11.15 last night. Case Hotel's Max Massey found out the man behind the wheel who caused the accident was actually driving away from a hit and run. I was asleep. I heard like a loud, a loud bang. Desiree Yanez woke up to a crash last night only feet from her front door. My uh, aunt's car uh, that hit my truck and went on top of the curb. So she said as soon as she ran to the gate, she saw a big 4x4 uh, truck um, flee the scene. This was the condition her and her aunt's car were left in, but the damage didn't end on Desiree Street. It got much worse about three blocks down the road. Police say the driver of that Ford pickup didn't stop at the stop sign, actually hit a police cruiser, causing it to spin out. If you take a look behind me, you can see some of the damage still here at the grass. And earlier this morning, there was shattered glass on the road and on the sidewalk. And then looking up, you can see CPS is still on the scene. They've actually been working throughout the day, fixing that utility pole where the police cruiser ended up. As for the driver of that pickup, he ended up hitting the tree behind the pole. And the medical examiner has confirmed that it was Jonathan Paul Smith behind the wheel. The police officer who was hit was treated for minor injuries, and the driver who caused the crash died on the way to the hospital. This was a scary situation, but with small children, Desiree says it could have been much worse. Uh, thank God nothing happened to my family as well because my kids are always coming back and forth from my from my aunt's house to my house, and I just uh, thank God that nothing happened to my family. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News.
Another crash on the southeast side left two women injured with the driver becoming trapped inside the vehicle. It happened in the 3400 block of East South Cross just before one o'clock this morning. Police think the driver had some kind of a medical episode before the crash. The female driver ended up getting pinned by the dashboard and crews had to roll it back to get her out. Both women were hospitalized. They are expected to be okay. Leon Valley officers investigating a shooting victim that was found in the street by Leon Valley residents late last night. He was discovered in the 5400 block of Prentice Drive near Wurzbach Road. Kids 12 Sarah Costa spoke with the neighbor who found the victim in front of his home. I saw this young man on the middle of the street, thought he was probably drunk. Rudy Trevino tells us he just happened to be taking out his trash at 10 last night when he saw the man staggering in the street who then fell on his driveway. My son was out here trying to help me. Uh, he's the one that actually was holding him. Trevino says this all happening around 10 o'clock. He called 911, letting them know they found a man with a gunshot wound to the chest. My son told him he probably had been shot because he had a little blood on his shirt. The man who police say was in his 20s was taken to University Hospital in critical condition. But in front of Trevino's house on Prentice Drive is not where Leon Valley police believe the man was shot. It's here about one mile away on Evers and Forest Moss. That police found several bullet shell casings that they believe are related to this crime. They are trying to figure out how we got to Prentice Drive and don't know if he walked or was dropped off. As for Trevino, he says the events of Thursday night were dramatic and rare for the quiet neighborhood. We never had shootings out here, you know. It, it, is, it is quite a quiet neighborhood. Police say they are still looking for suspects and trying to figure out what led up to this shooting. Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. You might remember a disturbing case of animal cruelty. More than 500 snakes and rodents removed from a home last week. Now a hearing is being held to determine where those animals should go. Animal Care Services found the reptiles and rodents at a home on Caton near Rigsby on the southeast side. ACS says the seizure was the largest the department has ever seen. Those animals found in deplorable conditions with no water. Their enclosures were filthy. Several efforts were made to take the feeder mice, rats, and snakes. Animal Care Services finally received a warrant to do so. Animal cruelty charges are currently pending against the owner of the property. Jesse Degollado is at that hearing. She's going to have an update in our later newscasts. Former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort in court today. He pled guilty to two federal crimes as part of a plea deal that will require him to cooperate with the special counsel's Russia probe. The deal will keep him from having to go through a second criminal trial that was scheduled to start later this month in Washington. Last month, Manafort was convicted on eight financial crimes in a separate trial in Virginia. Manafort pleaded guilty to charges related to his Ukrainian political consulting work today. The White House also said today the Manafort case has nothing to do with Trump. Despite the weather, this weekend of high school football got off to a pretty good start last night. Larry Mears with champion MacArthur highlights coming up. And a series of explosions rocking three small towns in Massachusetts. The number of deaths reported and what led to the round of blasts that has communities on edge. For all of your allergy needs, visit Dilly Allergy and Asthma Specialist at KSAT.com's health and wellness page. Wainwright Injury Lawyers, winning clients the most money possible. My legs were broken in a motorcycle accident. Wainwright got me $189,477. Call Power Lawyer Wainwright, 888-8888. I found the perfect car at a great price. Zero hassles, zero stress. Just shopping made easy. World Car Hyundai is the place. Get a new 2018 Hyundai Elantra SE for only $14.5 or a Hyundai Tucson SE for only $19.5 and receive this. I have a lifetime warranty. I have lifetime roadside assistance too. Shop online at World Car Hyundai North or stop on in. You can't beat a lifetime warranty. That's like forever. World Car for a lifetime. I'm Ted Cruz and I approve this message. Does Beto O'Rourke think refusing to stand for the national anthem is disrespectful? No, I don't think it's disrespectful. And I can think of nothing more American than to peacefully stand up or take a knee. Texan Tim Lee stepped on a landmine in Vietnam. 
I gave too late for this country. I'm not able to stand, but I sure expect you to stand for me when that national anthem is being played. In November, where will you stand? Wainwright Injury Lawyers, winning clients the most money possible. My car was rear-ended and total. I had back pain and I needed neck surgery. And Wainwright got me $119,420 in my pocket. Call Power Lawyer Wainwright, 888-8888. A Fort Worth police officer is in critical condition, fighting for his life after being shot while confronting robbery suspects, forcing police to kill that gunman. Police said the officer was conducting surveillance on three robbery suspects at a bar. They said the suspects robbed the bar, and that's when the officer confronted them. The suspects took off running when one of the robbers fired a shot, hitting the officer in the head. Another officer returned fire, killing the suspect. Other officers caught and arrested the two other robbers. A series of natural gas explosions in the suburbs of Boston, setting fire to dozens of homes and killing one person and injuring at least 10 others. The National Transportation Safety Board is investigating the explosions from late last night. They ignited fires in at least 39 homes in Massachusetts towns of Lawrence and over to North Andover. More than 8,000 people were forced to evacuate as the crews scrambled to fight these flames and shut off the gas and electricity. Many have been cleared to go back inside as officials try to reassure evacuated residents that they are safe. We brought in and will continue to bring in hundreds of nat natural gas technicians to the affected areas. These technicians will deploy throughout the neighborhoods to do the work they need to do house by house to ensure that each building is safe to return to. According to the state fire marshal, a surge in the gas main seems to be the cause of all of this. Only one person was killed, an 18-year-old teen who died after a chimney from one of those explosions fell on top of his car. A live look outside with live cam. We know they're uh, having a big problem out there on the East Coast with Florence. But, hey, we've got our own little situation here in San Antonio. We've got to kind of be concerned about this weekend. There's going to be some pockets of heavier rain. You just saw the light cam there. We're seeing some sun popping out, too. So the sun, we get a little more instability. We'll get these pop-up showers that will produce some quick, heavy rain. That may cause some flooding, at least localized flooding in spots. And... We've gotten plenty of rain over the last week or so, right? We're up to 24.2, or up 24.2 feet with the aquifer since Labor Day, and it's still going up. In the pollen count, we have high counts of mold and fall elm ragweeds in the low category. We're gonna talk more about the potential for some heavy rainfall coming up. Meet Gina Ortiz Jones. Here's her home in Washington, D.C. Just blocks from where Nancy Pelosi funnels money to Jones's campaign. Down the street, Jones collects cash from Washington special interests, putting their agenda before Texas. And here's Washington National Airport, where Gina Ortiz Jones catches the plane for a quick visit to Texas to pander for your vote. Gina Ortiz Jones. She's Washington's candidate, not ours. NRCC is responsible for the content of this advertising. It got to the point where mom stopped using the phone. She was so frustrated that she couldn't hear. Thankfully, I found the answer. A CapTel Caption Telephone. With your Sprint CapTel phone, you hear what you can and read what you miss. It's operator-assisted voice recognition, so you see what your caller says word for word. It's just like using any other phone. Plus, I can read what my caller says. If you have hearing loss, you can get a phone at no cost to you. I love my Sprint CapTel. You know when you're at Ross and that cute dress gets even cuter? Yes! Or when you can say yes to both? Sure. Or when you find that brand at that price? Are you kidding me? Yeah. That's yes for less. And that's what Ross always has in store. Oh, yeah. It feels even better when you find it for less. At Ross. Yes for less. Your story is unique. Untold, it's just a memory. How do I want to be remembered? For the unit I served in. Told, it can become a legacy. Who do I want to remember me? My grandkids. So tell your story, preserve your legacy, and let Porter Loring help, just as we have for the past 100 years.
foundation formed over seven decades, so solid it's still a crucial piece of San Antonio's culture almost 90 years later. It began with an ambitious group of Mexican-American women who thrived in the plazas of San Antonio as early as the 1870s. These young women wearing colorful brabosos were a little flirtatious trying to get customers and not just to sell their chili, but to entertain and bring together the social and cultural melting pot that we still see here in San Antonio. The innovative women followed the crowds moving from plaza to plaza throughout the years. They were in front of the Alamo and Alamo Plaza for a while and ultimately ended up at Haymarket Plaza in the 1930s when the Chili Queens were shut down for health code as part of a new progressive era in San Antonio. Some Chili Queens opened brick and mortar restaurants and others were not sure. All that remains are a few images and paintings of the women who created a staple food known all over the world. San Antonio's Tricentennial Moments on KSAT 12 are powered by Frost Bank and Sierra Cars Trucks and RVs and the Children's Hospital of San Antonio. And the Texas General Land Office is hosting an SA 300 History Symposium this weekend. The ninth annual event going on until 5 this evening at Alamo Hall. This year's event is entitled San Antonio and the Alamo, connecting Texas for three centuries in line with the city's tricentennial. Texas Land Commissioner George P. Bush is hosting the event. They're going to be discussing the effort to preserve and restore our Alamo. Good thing they worked on the roof of the Alamo because, you know, it's going to be raining this weekend. Right? <laughs> and those pictures we were just looking at, that clearly was not shot today. Not today. You know, it's, it's pretty cloudy out there. And... Uh, we're starting to see some pop-up showers, and what we do want to pass along is that we're going to get some of these pop-up showers. They're going to produce some heavy rain. We may see anywhere from two to four inches in some cases, and normally we'd be just fine with that, but it's because we have saturated grounds that we're worried that there could be some flooding in localized spots. So how much is this going to mess with high school football tonight? Well, that's the big question, right? And yeah. it's, it's one of those things where these showers will be hit or miss, and there could be some really good downpours right over a football stadium, and there may not be. Uh, but... Uh, you can see on the radar, there we go. We're starting to see some of that development that we were talking about. The, the persistent rain, the heavy rain has been down along the coast. Uh, but that's just an indication that some of that deeper moisture is starting to work in. And you're starting to see the radar become just a little bit more active. We're seeing these pop-up showers here across Bear County, Comal County, and then in, out to the west around Medina County. And we'll see more of this, I think, as we go throughout the course of the afternoon. We've seen some passing showers here in San Antonio. We've seen some wet roadways, and then these showers move right along and uh, they move out. So here's what one of our computer models is showing. This is one of our high resolution computer models. It basically sticks with that idea. Scattered to uh, widespread showers and storms as we get into this afternoon and this evening. And then that'll be the case again tonight and even into tomorrow. We'll see the chance for rain. Although as we get into tomorrow afternoon, I think the chances start to shift a little bit further to the south and west of San Antonio. And then by Sunday, most of this moves out of here and we'll just see some isolated stuff. There is a flash flood watch in effect that goes until 7 p.m. tomorrow. And again, one of the main reasons for that is because the ground is saturated. So any additional rainfall will cause runoff and perhaps some flooding in spots. There's like the visible satellite picture. Boy, a lot of clouds. We are seeing some breaks, though, here and there, and that uh, contributes to some instability and gets those clouds uh, to grow a little bit more and perhaps produce some showers and storms. It's cloudy for the most part, Victoria Gonzalez, but as you get west, there are some of those breaks and with the sun peeking through, that should help to push temperatures up into the 80s, at least for a little bit. And right now we're seeing 78 degrees. East northeasterly winds at about eight. It's plenty humid out there. And this is the rainfall potential as we see it. We talked about two to four inches. Four inches is probably on the high end. And not everybody is going to see numbers like this, but that's uh, sort of a generalization here as uh, these showers and storms so uh, work their way through the area. Of course, the big numbers are along the east coast. That's where they could see 20 inches plus with Florence as it slowly works its way down the coast there in the Carolinas. There is a look at it with our uh, satellite picture. And this is uh, our 3D satellite, which gives it kind of a cool view. You can see uh, just how big this storm is. Winds right now are at 75 miles per hour, so it's still just barely a Category 1 storm because it is interacting with the land. But the rainfall now becomes the big concern, and uh, you can see the eye wall has almost completely disappeared. Here it is on radar, and it's just sort of meandering along here, and uh, very, very heavy rain falling on the west side of that eye wall, and there's still some pretty strong winds there, and there's also a tornado threat. So 
Uh, they'll be very busy there in the Carolinas throughout the rest of the afternoon, despite the fact that it has already made landfall. 83 this afternoon, about a 70% chance of rain, especially as we get into the afternoon, uh, late afternoon hours and evening. 73 tonight, still a 60% chance of rain, and we'll go 70% tomorrow, too. Lots of cloud cover, more isolated Sunday, and by Monday, we're just talking about a 20% shot, and it warms up and clears out some next week. But have the radar on your phone. Keep an eye on it. Yeah. Is that sun, though? I mean, like, is that real, or are you just playing it? <laughs> there, is, there is fake there sun. Is sun out there, yeah. Okay. There's, I got it right there. There's the radar. Mm -hmm. Ready to go. Okay. I like it. So, all right. <laughs> Coming today, new at 5, do you trust Facebook after that huge data scandal? While Facebook says it's making changes, you should still be proactive in protecting your privacy and data. What you need to know today at 5 after entertainment tonight. So you need to take your phone with you to the stadium tonight and keep up with uh, the radar. Yeah, I'll have to keep it in a plastic bag, though, right? Yeah, yeah. Ziploc. Uh, That's a good idea, yeah. too. Yeah. Or keep a bag of rice there with me as well, so when yeah, it does get go. wet, I can just throw it in it and dry it off. Last night, we had more games than usual with teams switching their contests to last night to avoid rain. This game, though, already scheduled. O'Connor and Warren at District 28-6A matchup last night. Plus, we'll let you know where we're going on the BGC road trip tonight. Coming up. Have you been suffering in a failed marriage and are ready to divorce? We'll help you get a better future. Contact attorney Stephen Benke at BenkeLaw.com for help. We're just getting started here on GMSA. The caffeine is starting to trickle in. 439, 74 degrees. Some heavier showers and thunderstorms, and that'll be again the case overnight in through tomorrow. ABC's Emily Rao is in Wilmington, North Carolina with the latest on the conditions. As first responders pull back, the storm surge is rushing in. Any more rain for the upcoming week? Plus, we look ahead to see what the first official day of fall looks like. Monday, 4.30 to 7 on Good Morning San Antonio. Steinmart's famous 12-hour sale is here with huge store-wide savings. Get up to 50% off famous brand dresses, shoes, activewear, handbags, jewelry, bedding, and much more. Plus, up to 70% off all clearance items this Friday and Saturday at Steinmart. Beto O'Rourke says there's no crisis on the border. Of course there is, and O'Rourke's part of the problem. Rolling out the red carpet for illegal immigrants, taxpayer-funded benefits, sanctuary cities, while voting against body armor for Texas sheriffs patrolling the border. Now, O'Rourke's talking about abolishing ICE, giving free reign to Mexican drug cartels. Lawless borders, reckless politician. That's Beto O'Rourke. Texans are as responsible for the content of this advertising. Steinmart's famous 12-hour sale is here with huge store-wide savings. Get up to 50% off famous brand dresses, shoes, activewear, handbags, jewelry, bedding, and much more. Plus up to 70% off all clearance items this Friday and Saturday at Steinmart. It was the Battle of Unbeatens last night as the number two rank O'Connor Panthers faced off with the number 12 Warren Warriors. Closing seconds of the first half, Panthers down 7-0 when Zion Taylor takes a handoff, hits the hole on second down of 21, and now it's a foot race, but the Warriors defense makes a shoot string tackle by Josiah Gutierrez-Smith at the 14, completing a 55-yard gain. Very next play, Panther quarterback David Dye lets it fly for Chase Locke, who gets one foot in, and that's a touchdown as the clock hits zero, and we're tied at 7 all halftime and O'Connor wins this district 28-6A contest 14-7 to remain undefeated. Champion Chargers decided to move their game against MacArthur from Friday to last night in order to avoid the predicted inclement weather. And the Chargers don't waste any time at all off the play-action fake. Quarterback Luke Boyers rolls out and winds up throwing back on the read option to Connor Beavers, and he's going for a 58-yard gain all the way down to the 6-yard line before he can be stopped. Then a couple of plays later, Boyers with the quarterback keeper to score. And look at the push from his offensive line awesome seven nothing champion and the final from bernie champion rolls 50 to nothing over at alamo stadium the edison golden bears going to against the burbank bulldogs in district play so this is an important contest they call this one against burbank and this call was crucial the ball comes loose and they rule edison has recovered after john alvarado falls on it but the ball squirts out and burbank's james vallejo actually has it but edison still gets the ball and that sends the head coach of burbank onto the field rightly so after a change of quarters that turnover leads to this 33-yard touchdown run by Juan Madrigal, and the Golden Bears take the early 7-0 lead in the second quarter, and the final from the rock pile, Burbank comes back to win 
14. We're now at Edgewood Veterans Stadium where the Memorial Minutemen entertain the Southside Cardinals and the Cardinals are flying high early. We're on the first quarter and Southside already up 7 to nothing and adding to it Alejandro Escamilla rolls right and he's going deep to Marco Escamilla who makes the catch for a 31 yard touchdown. And the Cardinals go for two and they lead 15 nothing but there's more on the second. Escamilla throws it back to his wide receiver Michael Hernandez and he hits a wide open Caleb Camarillo for the 29 yard score. That makes it 22 nothing and Southside wins in a shutout 35 to 0. Across the street from KSAT, it's a Central Catholic Buttons hosting the Seguin Matadors in a game that was moved up to avoid their predicted inclement weather. Matadors with the ball when quarterback Anthony Gonzalez fires to Dalen Rivers, who leaps up in double coverage, comes down with it to give Seguin the 7 0 lead in the final from Bob Benson Stadium. 42 to 21, Seguin. The center point Pirates visiting TMI in a game that was also moved up to Thursday. The Pathers pouncing already up 14 to 6 in the second quarter when quarterback William Elms rolls out, puts this pass to Zach Perkins, and that turns into a 40-yard touchdown as Perkins dives into the end zone and make it 21 to 6. And let's go to the big game coverage scoreboard to get that final. And TMI goes on to win 35-21. And other scores, Pettis defeats Kennedy 51-44. Floresville is 10 better than Carrizo Springs 38-28. Catula beat Dilly 13-6. Yoakum over Gonzalez 33-14. Charlotte is a winner 26-7. Howlsville shut out Nixon Smiley 27-0. And Ingram outscored Harper 33-15. And here is the BGC road trip for tonight. So Pettis and Kennedy, now they played last night, but we'll still show you the exciting action from that game. Then it's Stockdale at Fall City and Carn City at Poth. So we will go live at Fall City at 6. We will go live at Poth 10 o'clock during the night beat, Ooh. and we'll have highlights of all three games. That's and a lot of action for a Thursday A night. lot of action yeah. indeed. And you got your tonight. galoshes all packed. I'm all ready to go. Umbrella. I left my rain jacket at home, turned around and got it, so now I'm good. Okay. <laughs> He's ready, y'all. Fired up. We'll be right back. It's Spectrum's best deal days. Get Spectrum TV, internet, and voice from $29.99 a month each. Call 844-559-2999. Spectrum TV with free HD, thousands of free on-demand titles, and access to the free Spectrum TV app to watch live TV at home or on the go. Spectrum TV from $29.99 a month. Spectrum has the fastest internet starting speeds, 200 megabits per second, and enough bandwidth to keep everyone's devices connected. With no data caps, plus a free modem. But wait, there's more when you call 844-559-2999. Spectrum Voice, with unlimited nationwide calling in the U.S., Canada, Mexico, and more. With no additional taxes and fees, all with no contracts. It's Spectrum's best deal days. Get Spectrum TV, Internet, and Voice from $29.99 a month each. Plus, introducing Spectrum Mobile. Ask how you can save up to 40% off your current mobile bill. Call 844-559-2999. These are the faces of the more than 300,000 people in this part of Texas who could lose their health care coverage because they have a pre-existing condition or will no longer be able to afford their premium. All because Will Hurd put politics before us when he voted eight times to repeal the Affordable Care Act. I'm Gina Ortiz-Jones. I approve this message and I will never put politics before you. X marks the spot on the calendar for family events like game days and starting back to school. North Park Lincoln has marked September for selling down our final inventories of 2018 Lincoln MKXs to make room for the 19s. Get one with Apple CarPlay, Wi-Fi hotspot, remote start, and more posted for $34,895 plus 0% financing or lease for $359 a month. Lincoln MKX has the most leg room in its class, which helps because their legs aren't getting any shorter. Visit North Park Lincoln, San Pedro and Loop 410. We are tracking Hurricane Florence. This is a live look out of North Carolina. The storm has made landfall just a couple hours ago, and it brought a lot of high wind and rain with it, and it's sticking around for a long time. Plus, a series of gas explosions described as Armageddon, killing a teenager and injuring at least 10 other people. That blast ignited fires at several homes in three counties north of Boston. We have the latest on the aftermath. But first, we're going to head outside with live cam. We've got our own situation going on down in the Gulf, and the governor has just made a very important announcement considering that uh, situation down there. Justin uh, is letting us know that a state disaster declaration has now been issued by the governor's office. 
Uh, yes, and, and uh, let me just say this, that, that there is uh, nothing going on in the Gulf tropical wise. We're just seeing a tropical wave moving in. We're just seeing some moisture move in, and there's going to be some heavy rain in spots, and there could be some concerns about flooding, but it's something that we need to get too, too worried about. We're going to keep you posted through the day, and basically you can see on radar what we're looking at. Some showers drifting in. Some of these could produce some heavier rain as they uh, track through, but the, that's going to be the nature of the activity today. It's just these pop-up showers. There is a, quite a bit of moisture in the atmosphere, and that's going to put down some good rain at times. But they're moving pretty quickly, and so far we've just seen some good downpours here in San Antonio. As we look off to the south and east, we're also seeing some of those showers there around uh, Cuero. And then uh, down towards Victoria, we're seeing some rain. It's a little more steady down there along the coast, and that's where a lot of that tropical moisture still is. But it's starting to spread inland, and that's why we're seeing a little bit more in the way of showers and storms there on the radar across the uh, central part of the viewing area. Forecast for today takes us up to about 83. We'll have about a 70% chance of rain as we get into the afternoon and the evening hours. And there's a look at Florence right now. It's still... Still hurricane winds are uh, up around 75 miles per hour gusting to 100. It's weakening as it uh, stays right on the coast there, but producing a ton of heavy rain in the Carolinas. Still some problems there. They had the big storm surge this morning as this thing came on board. A lot of winds and there is going to be flooding there as well. We're going to talk more about that and have more in our forecast coming up in just a few minutes. David. All right, real quick, though, let's talk about what Governor Greg Abbott has done. He issued a state disaster declaration to protect his counties that may be impacted by several or severe weather and flooding as a tropical storm approaches the state. Prior to the disaster declaration, he ordered that the Texas State Operations Center to increase its readiness to level two, and Bear County is among the counties included in that disaster declaration. So uh, we'll keep you up to date on that. In the meantime, Hurricane Florence made landfall on the North Carolina coast. Dangerous flood waters now inundating communities. Heavy wind and rain knocking out power for hundreds of thousands of people. ABC's Natalie Burnell is in Wilmington with the latest. Hurricane Florence lashing the Carolinas. The slow, vicious storm delivering sheets of rain and ferocious winds topping 105 miles per hour in Wilmington. Waters rising rapidly. Rainwater and surge are forcing sounds and rivers over their banks. In New Bern, North Carolina, waves reaching first floor windows prompting emergency situations. I've never seen this kind of damage here. Hundreds needing rescue. Oh gosh, it's, uh, yeah, it's like a bomb that's gone off here. It's uh, there's a, a lot of water. Along the outer banks, swift destruction, deadly storm surge engulfing homes. ABC crews spread throughout the storm zone, caught in the thick of it, like meteorologist Ginger Z. I came inside because at one point while we were out there in the eye wall, the winds were so severe that the deck we were standing on started ripping apart. The storm's disastrously slow crawl, dumping feet of rain, a relentless assault that will continue into the weekend. The developing concern is high tide, which just started at 11 a.m. and will continue to push dangerous flooding into communities and make rescues even more difficult. In Wilmington, North Carolina, Natalie Brunel, ABC News. Former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort pled guilty to two federal crimes as part of a plea deal. The deal will require him to cooperate with the special counsel's Russia probe and it will keep him from having to go through a second criminal trial that was scheduled to start later this month in Washington. Last month, Manafort was convicted on eight financial crimes in a separate trial in Virginia. Manafort pleaded guilty to charges related to his Ukrainian political consulting work. Investigators are now on the scene after a series of natural gas explosions in the suburbs of Boston. It set fire to dozens of homes, killing at least one person and injuring at least 10 more. ABC's Linda Lopez has the story. The National Transportation Safety Board on the scene after a series of terrifying gas explosions late Thursday ignited fires in at least 39 homes in the Massachusetts towns of Lawrence, Andover, and North Andover. So this is indeed a tragedy. It's affecting uh, 
uh, hundreds, if not thousands of people. More than 8,000 people forced to evacuate as crews scrambled to fight the flames and shut off gas and electricity. In my 91 years, I've never had anything like this before. Many people have been cleared to go back to their homes as officials tried to reassure evacuated residents. We brought in and will continue to bring in hundreds of nat natural gas technicians to the affected areas. These technicians will deploy throughout the neighborhoods to do the work they need to do house by house to ensure that each building is safe to return to. According to the state fire marshal, a surge in the gas main seems to be the cause. Remarkably, only one person was killed, 18-year-old Lionel Rondon. He died after a chimney from one of the house explosions fell on his car. Dozens of homes left in smoldering ruins. We're there to investigate the accident, to determine what happened so that we can keep it from happening again. The homes that were evacuated in this area are serviced by Columbia Gas. Columbia quickly putting out a statement saying the first priorities for our crews at the scene is to ensure the safety of our customers and the community. Linda Lopez, ABC News, New York. Meantime, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo beating out his opponent, actress Cynthia Nixon, in the primary race. He ended her attempt to become the latest insurgent liberal to knock off an establishment Democrat. Cuomo outspent his rival and led in the polls all the way. He seldom mentioned Nixon by name during what turned out to be a nasty campaign, instead touted his experience and achievements during his two terms as governor. Cuomo will now face Republican Mark Molinaro in November's general election. Back here at home, we now know the driver who died after crashing into a police unit in a tree was driving away from a hit-and-run crash. It happened last night around 11.15 in the 400 block of West South Cross Boulevard. Police say 31-year-old Jonathan Smith was behind the wheel of a Ford pickup truck that sped through a stop sign and then hit a police cruiser. That cruiser hit a utility pole, and the officer involved was treated for minor injuries. The Ford then crashed into a pole, and that driver later died. I feel bad for his family, and I mean, if he would have just stopped right here, I'm pretty sure he would still be alive. Neighbors say the man behind the wheel first crashed into a parked car about three blocks down the road and was driving away when he hit that police unit. Leon Valley Police investigating a man with a gunshot wound that was found on a residential street by neighbors late Thursday night. This happened just after 10 last night in the 5400 block of Prentice Drive. First responders say the man was still alive when they found him, but unresponsive. He was taken to University Hospital, but is in critical condition. One resident says he was taking out the trash when he saw the man in the street. My son was out here trying to help me. Uh, he's the one that actually was holding him. But in front of Trevino's house is not where Leon Valley police believe the man was actually shot. Police found several bullet shell casings near Evers Road and that they believe that those bullets are related to this crime. Still coming up, a New York giant is calling out Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott calling right back. Ooh, more words before the big game. Larry Mears with that coming up in sports. If you or a loved one has been injured in an auto or truck accident, call 210-222-2288 or Google Carabin Shaw. I have a lifetime warranty. I have lifetime roadside assistance, too. World Car Kia is the place. Lease a beautiful 2018 Kia Optima LX for only $199 a month. Or lease a 2019 Kia Sorento LX for $265 a month. I found the process smooth and hassle-free. I found the car I wanted and got easy financing, just like that. I feel good knowing I have a lifetime warranty. Shop online or visit any of the World Car Kia stores in San Antonio or New Braunfels. World Car, for a lifetime. Even Democrats don't trust Gina Ortiz-Jones, because when it comes to our local economy, here is what her fellow Democrat had to say about her support of BRAC that will close vital military bases. When I heard Gina say yes, she would support a third round of BRAC, I was really surprised, because it, it is unimaginable to me that anybody who wants to represent this district would ever be for BRAC. It's like playing Russian roulette with people's jobs. Gina Ortiz Jones and her plan will hurt our local communities and put our national security at risk. 
Will Hurd has served alongside our brave men and women overseas and here at home. He will never gamble with the jobs of our nation's heroes or our children's safety. Will Hurd works every day to strengthen our economy and keep these vital military bases open. I'm Will Hurd and I approve this message. We've got an update on this story for you. Matt has relinquished his ownership of 136 pythons and over 400 rodents to animal carrier services. They were seized from a house off of Rigsby earlier this month. As part of that agreement, the man will not have to reimburse ACS an estimated $20,000 it costs for impounding, carrying, and feeding for other snakes and rodents. ACS now must find suitable places to take them in. It's already been in touch with several rescue groups. Tacos are a San Antonio favorite, of course, and you can't find different kinds, or you can find different kinds all over the city. Oh, yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. This week in Flavor Faves, we're going to take you to one taco joint that has been around for more than a decade. Eric Hernandez takes a look. As soon as you arrive to Zaquitos West Avenue, you can smell the food cooking. The indoor-outdoor restaurant has been a part of the city for about 12 years. We strive to do our best for our customers. Manager Octavio Cosilion shows us around the place and says that the menu only consists of tacos. We have five types of tacos. We have al pastor, tripa, barbacoa, steak, and suadero. Now these are traditional street tacos you can find like in Jalisco, Mexico. The most popular ones here though are al pastor y bistec. All the meat is cooked fresh every day and placed on special made corn tortillas. And that's not all. For many customers, the best part are all the amazing toppings that add so much extra flavor. Se les va acompañado de cilantro, cebolla. It comes with cilantro, onions, radish, cucumbers, lime, grilled onions, and a roasted jalapeno. Over the past several years, the place has become a hot spot, and on most nights, you can find the line all the way to the street. But don't let that stop you from visiting, because these tacos are quickly made and served to you fresh. All more reasons to make Taquitos West Avenue one of your regular spots to dine. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. The popular music streaming site Spotify increasing the number of songs subscribers can download for offline listening. Before, the Swedish streaming service would let users download 3,333 songs per device on up to three devices. Now, subscribers can download up to 10,000 songs per device on up to five devices. So someone with five devices could download up to 50,000 different songs. Wow, that's a lot of music. Spotify told Rolling Stone, quote, at Spotify, we're always working on improving the experience for our users. Why was it 3,333 to begin with? Well, was there some significance to that number? Must have been. There's significance to this picture. There goes yeah. the windshield wiper. Live cam showing us, yes, it is raining in San Antonio. In fact, I don't think I've left the rain at all today. Everywhere I went, it was drizzling. Yeah, th there's been rain around, and I think that picture shows it beautifully. We've got a, a little bit of sun coming through, some of those pop-up showers and downpours, and they're putting down some good rain. There's a lot of moisture in the atmosphere, so if you get caught underneath one of these downpours, it, it's going to come down really good. Uh, so far this month, we're at 11.45 inches. By the way, this is the third wettest September on record, and we may be approaching the second or first as we get later into this month as range in the forecast today and tomorrow for the year we're at 25.19 we'll talk more about our rain chances uh, for the weekend too coming up rivals glad it's the best of high school football expect more highlights the best plays case at 12 sports guys have your game covered big game covered powered by ram trucks built to serve Kickapoo Lucky Eagle Casino Hotel is kicking off football season with the $100,000 Ultimate Drive Giveaway. Earn entries now and score a Ram Rebel truck or up to $1,000 cash. Play hard or go home. Come and play. We're how you'll find a specialist in the middle of the night. We're how you and your family get the care you need closer to home. We're how cancer care is changing for the better. We're how discovery impacts treatment faster. 
We're how compassion, humility, and more options meet patient care. And your why. UT Health San Antonio. Meet Gina Ortiz Jones. Here's her home in Washington, D.C., just blocks from where Nancy Pelosi funnels money to Jones's campaign. Down the street, Jones collects cash from Washington's special interests, putting their agenda before Texas. And here's Washington National Airport, where Gina Ortiz Jones catches the plane for a quick visit to Texas to pander for your vote. Gina Ortiz Jones. She's Washington's candidate, not ours. NRCC is responsible for the content of this advertising. Kickapoo Lucky Eagle Casino Hotel invites you to come and play. Over 3,300 of your favorite slots, a private poker room, bingo, and live entertainment every weekend. Join the Players Club and play your way to greater rewards. Come and play. Can you dance? Don't make me dance. Attempting hybridization. They're upgrading on every chance of this. New in theaters, a new version of The Predator. The universe's most lethal hunters are stronger and smarter than ever before, having genetically upgraded themselves with DNA from other species. When a boy accidentally triggers their return to Earth, only a ragtag crew of ex soldiers and an evolutionary biologist can prevent the end of the human race. Gosh, a lot at stake. The Predator is rated R. Stephanie, I need your help. Uh, are you okay? I'm fine. The movie A Simple Favor centers around Stephanie, a mommy vlogger who seeks to uncover the truth behind her best friend Emily's sudden disappearance from their small town. A Simple Favor is rated R. You're gonna get in too deep. Man, they're not gonna let you out. White Boy Rick is based on the true story of a teenage police informant and drug kingpin. Rick is a single father struggling to raise two teenagers during the height of the crack epidemic in the 1980s in Detroit. He sells guns illegally to make ends meet, but soon attracts attention from the FBI. Federal agents convince his son, Rick Jr., to become an undercover drug informant in exchange for keeping his father out of prison. White Boy Rick is rated R. I just thought I'd be able to forget everything. I want to go home. There is no home. And finally, the faith-based film Unbroken Path to Redemption is about a former World War II prisoner of war converting to evangelical Christianity. Unbroken Path to Redemption is rated PG-13. Is that the, uh, uh, the prequel to the Unbroken movie that came out a few years ago? I don't know. It's the same, same story, story. It done in a different yeah. way. Okay. Well, there you go. Thank you very much to our director, Donnie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, guys, we've been watching the radar pretty closely today and what's going on out there. We, we see a scattering of showers and storms, and the question becomes, uh, how much rain are we going to get? And is the potential for flooding there? And, and the answer to that is, yes, we could see some flooding in spots. But right now, this is just scattered showers and scattered downpours. And we see uh, some of the more steady rain down there along the coast, Victoria, uh, further south towards Rockport. They've gotten some pretty good rainfall totals down there, and this is sort of the leading edge of that tropical moisture that's starting to surge into the area, and that's why we're starting to see more uh, scattering of showers than what we were looking at this morning. And these are working east to west. That'll be the trend today, so you'll see that work east to west across Bear County. We're already seeing that here in San Antonio with some wet freeways out there. Some of these showers work through. We're already starting to see more pop up, so expect this trend to continue for the rest of today. Here's one of our computer models showing that uh, Fairly widespread rain, I think, as we go into this afternoon and tonight. It's kind of hard to pinpoint exactly where the heaviest of the rain will fall. So that's why this uh, flash flood watch includes most of South Texas. Again, it's going to be localized where I think we see some of the more significant flooding, if we see that at all. And as we go into tomorrow, the potential is there to get uh, a little bit more heavy rain as some of this uh, moisture continues to work through. Now, as we get into tomorrow afternoon and evening, It'll start to shift off to the south and west as this system moves into Mexico. And then by Sunday, we'll get a chance to dry out a little. There'll still be some showers and storms, but it'll be more isolated. There's that flash flood watch we were talking about. It goes until 7 p.m. Saturday, basically Houston over towards San Antonio and then uh, points to the south. It is probably south of Highway 90 where we have the largest potential for 
uh, some flooding. As we look at the visible satellite picture, <laughs> there is a lot of clouds. We are seeing some peaks of sun, though, too, and that's contributing to some instability. It allows these uh, downpours to pop up and they move right along. So it's not going to be one big shield of rain, at least not this afternoon. Uh, it'll just be those uh, pop up showers. You'll get a little bit of sun and then maybe a shower a little bit later. And that's the situation we're seeing here around the airport. Sun's starting to pop out for a second. 78 degrees, east northeasterly winds at about 8 miles per hour. Rainfall potential, and this is a very generalized idea here, but we're thinking one to three inches, maybe four inches on the high side in some spots. And again, that favorite area is probably going to be San Antonio and points off to the south and west. We've also been talking about the incredibly heavy rainfall that is going on with Florence. 20 inches plus, they'll probably be measuring some of the rainfall in feet here as Florence continues to very, very slowly move uh, right on the coast there. It's moving west at about six miles per hour. Still looks pretty healthy here on the satellite picture, but it's starting to fall apart a bit. Winds right now are at 75 miles per hour. And there's a little closer look. It had an eye earlier, but once it moved inland, it loses, it starts to lose its structure a little bit, but the big issue now is the rainfall. As slow as this thing is moving, uh, again, just incredible amounts of rain likely going to fall in parts of North Carolina and South Carolina. And you can see the eyes sort of disappeared there, but still some very heavy rain on the uh, west side of that as it uh, moves towards South Carolina. So the forecast for us today will be up around 83 degrees this afternoon, about a 70% chance of rain. As we go into tonight, 60% chance. It may fall off a little bit, but there will still be some decent downpours out there. And tomorrow, a 70% chance of rain. It becomes a little more isolated Sunday, and then by the middle part of next week, we actually do get a chance to clear out and see some sun, if that's something you're missing. Uh, but we suspect that the aquifer will continue to go up and, it, it, you know, the rain's a good thing. We just don't want too much of it. And that's something we'll be watching closely for you. And if uh, there are any uh, flooding issues, we'll be sure to let you know. A nice steady drizzle is about all we can take right now, huh? Yes. If, if we get some, uh, you know, widespread heavy rain, that, that may cause some issues. All right. Thank you, Justin. All right. Larry Ramirez has got some Dallas Cowboy activity coming up next. Ah, oh, they're mouthing off with the Giants. Really? Come on. The 96-hour sale is back at Toyota Bernie. $7,600 off new 2018 Tundras. Save $7,600 for 96 hours only at Toyota Bernie. I-10 exit 543 in Bernie. Toyota of Bernie.com. A West Point graduate, Joseph Kopser served 20 years in the military, two combat tours in Iraq. Returning home, Kopser founded a successful technology company, creating Texas jobs, and helped build a nonprofit for other veterans to start their own businesses. Joseph Kopser. I've crossed oceans and deserts to defend our country. Believe me, I can cross an aisle if that's what it takes to solve our problems in Washington. And I'm not afraid to stand up to leaders in both parties to do it. I'm Joseph Kopser and I approve this message. It's finally here. The Ross Ball Fashion Event has the brands you want. No. Yes. At oh yes prices. Like that handbag for wait, how much? What? Or that cute jacket that says check me out at a price that makes you say, check this out. That's yes for less. Find your new fall look at the Ross Ball Fashion Event. Ross has the trends you want and the brands you love. And it feels even better when you find them for less. Get to the Ross Ball Fashion Event. Yes for less. The 96-hour sale is back at Toyota Bernie. $4,600 off. New RAV4s save $4,600 for 96 hours only at Toyota Bernie. I-10, exit 543 in Bernie. Toyota of Bernie.com. A major hurricane on the East Coast and activity in the Gulf that could soon affect you. Keep up with it all in real time with KSAT 12's Hurricane Tracker app. Alerts, updates, local radar, and more. Be prepared. Download KSAT's Hurricane Tracker app for free. Landon Collins said earlier this week that, again, they were going to concentrate on Zeke. They wanted to put the ball in your hands because they think they had a better chance. Challenge accepted. Challenge accepted. Uh, it appears giant safety Landon Collins has angered Dallas QB Dak Prescott and Big Board Sports. Dak Prescott is struggling. He knows it, and the Giants know it, too. In the first half against the Panthers Sunday, Dak had 46 total yards in the air and finished with just 170. The Cowboys didn't score a touchdown until the fourth quarter in the 16-8 loss, the only score they could muster. In fact, Giants' Landon Collins says that the Giants focus on stopping Zeke and put the ball in Dak's hands. They have a better chance of winning Sunday night. Here's what Prescott had to say. 
Just coming out here every day and working, uh, spending extra time after practice, uh, working with some of these guys uh, on certain routes, so especially the routes we got this week or routes that we may not feel as comfortable um, with each other on. So make sure we're, we're thinking the right, the same thing and the right thing. Uh, but knowing you got 15 more and you've got all this time to keep working and getting better, you know that's going to happen. Uh, when we have the people and we have the guys that like to work and want to come in, want to know exactly what I'm thinking when I'm throwing the ball, uh, you're not quite as frustrated and you're more optimistic about what you're going to be. Cowboys and Giants will kick Sunday night at 720, and we will be there for live reports during the new one-hour edition of Instant Replay Sunday night. Now, when the Texans face the Titans in Tennessee on Sunday afternoon, they'll have Will Fuller the fifth back in the lineup. Right now, he's still limited in practice after injuring his hamstring, but he's confident he'll be able to play, and this would be a great game to stage his comeback since some of Fuller's best games as a wide receiver have been against the Titans. In last year's 57-14 win versus the Titans in October, Fuller caught... Fuller caught two touchdown passes, and in 2016, he had one TD and scored another on a 67-yard punt return. For Fuller, he's just happy to be back with the team. It feels good, but, you know, I wish I was out here the whole time, you know, so um, we can get that connection going in week one. But, um, you know, it, it feels good, you know, just to get back out there with the guys, like I keep saying. Oh, yeah, has speed. He can open up the field, uh, you know, help me get open, uh, you know, keep guys focused off of myself. Uh, Lamar Miller uh, and Deshaun, uh, you know, he can spread the field. Texans and Titans will kick at noon Sunday. Houston is favored by two and a half on the road. Week two of NFL action kicked off last night with the Baltimore Ravens at the Cincinnati Bengals and Big Cats quarterback Andy Dalton had a sweet game. First quarter, Dalton fakes the toss, then rolls out and finds A.J. Green for a four-yard touchdown, 7 nothing lead, and those two were just getting started. Still in the first, Dalton finds Green again. This time, he slips a tackle and so long. Ravens defense, 32 yards to make it 14 nothing Cincinnati, and Green gives that ball to a fan thanks to a little finger roll second frame Dalton to green again touchdown Bengals Dalton tossed four touchdowns three to green who had 69 yards receiving Bengals win 34 23 Dalton credits his old line for keeping him clean uh, on a short week I thought we did a great job and um, I mean to, to come out of a game like that not get sacked um, ver versus that defense is uh, it's, it's a big thing and uh, I thought our, guy, our guys played really good up front Ravens QB Joe Flacco was sacked four times, lost one fumble, and was picked off twice. Bad night for him. While you're talking Cowboys and Texans, okay. Harlandale ISD emailing us some information. Oh, cool. The game between McCullum and Somerset at Memorial Stadium now starts at 7. Harlandale and Kennedy at Veterans Stadium now starts at 7. So those games have been moved up because of the weather. All right, let's head over to SA Live and Market Square. It is Friday, of course, mm -hmm. and that means... A taste of fall. The yes. weekend is coming. <laughs> Kristen Ortiz is here, and you have got something new, right? Uh, I do. I've got some new whiskey for you all to try. Okay. And uh, it gives kind of in the fall spirit with a little bit of cinnamon, some herbs, sugar. Ooh, and, and different uh, fruits that are infused mm -hmm. in this, too. Yes, yes, yes. Really good drinks. Get you in that fall spirit, mm -hmm. right? And also get you in the fall spirit. Yes, why not? Gear you up a little early for Oktoberfest. Krause's Cafe and Beer Garden is <laughs> going to be <laughs> what, what entertaining us throughout the show, apparently, which is where David Elder is live there in New Braunfels. <laughs> oh, my gosh. How many of those beers has he had already? So, okay. We are then going to Fajita Rita's. It is Food Truck Friday. They have a one-pound burrito and what's called Death Wish Coffee. The 96-hour sale is back at Nissan of New Braunfels, 14888 Vaz Altima, 14888. It all ends Monday night at Nissan of New Braunfels, I-35, exit 191 in New Braunfels, Nissan of New Braunfels.com. Four years ago, I made some big promises, and I worked every day to keep them. Here in Texas, jobs are booming, wages are rising, and unemployment hit record lows. Schools are stronger. High school graduation rates are at all-time highs. Families are safer. We're locking up thousands of dangerous gang members. We've achieved a lot. Now I'll promise you one more thing. We're just getting started. There's something right in front of you that you're not seeing. But it's the first thing you'll feel. Marvin Windows and Doors. Define your home with Guido Building Materials, your local Marvin dealer.
Combining Marvin's superior products with Guido's unmatched commitment to personal service, you will undoubtedly find the perfect windows and doors for your project. Visit us online today. is back at Nissan of New Braunfels, 16988 Buzz Rogue, 16988. It all ends Monday night at Nissan of New Braunfels. I-35, exit 191 in New Braunfels, Nissan of New Braunfels.com. Welcome back. One last look at the uh, forecast and one last look at the radar. We're seeing some uh, showers continuing to develop here across South Texas, and it's becoming a little bit more widespread. The heavy rain still stays down along the coast, but we'll see these pop-up downpours moving through off and on throughout the afternoon and into the evening hours. So most definitely have the umbrella with you. And the forecast calls for about a 70% chance of rain, 70% chance tomorrow. A little bit more isolated Sunday, and certainly by Monday we're just talking about a few thunderstorms here and there. But flash flood watch in effect until 7 p.m. tomorrow. Just keep an eye out for some flooding. Have uh, have your radar with you for heading out to the football games tonight so you don't get drenched. <laughs> Good plan.